let's talk about Ray Dunn. It is Saturday, August 20 here in London, Ontario. A beautiful sunny day. A week ago, I got an alert on Marketplace about some yard sales. Um, I like to do the town-wide yard sales when I can. Um, sometimes they don't yield a whole lot, but sometimes they are just fantastic. Now, last week on Friday evening, I got a notice for a uh, yard sale uh, just outside of London here in uh, Thames Centre, I think it's called. Uh, Thames Ford or... Yeah, you'll have to look it up. But anyways, it's just east of London. And someone there was selling a bunch of Ray Dunn. And uh, as far as Ray Dunn goes, I uh, I like Ray Dunn. There's some really interesting pieces that that company does. Um, and especially their seasonal stuff, I find uh, very, um, very, you can get drawn into it, especially the Halloween and Christmas stuff that they do. Um, this individual, when I got there, the uh, the uh, yard sale didn't start till about, ooh, I think, 8 o'clock. But I was there at 7.30 because just in case they don't mind. I mean, they're already set up and they're probably sitting there. So I was there and um, there were very few people there yet. And all of her merchandise was there and she had a ton of Ray Dunn on her website. Um, or on her listing. So I thought, well, I'm going to take a chance because the pricing like was out of this world like for Ray Dunn stuff. The pricing was just very reasonable. Uh, so I'm gonna go through and show you what I did pick up. And at the end of it, I'll tell you how much I paid for it in total because she did give me a, um, a lot price because I, I had put a bunch of stuff off to the side and decided that, uh, yeah, it was all worth getting. Um, we'll also talk about um, uh, the antique mall and um, how some people feel about collectibles being there. Oh, just got to take care of my kitty for a second. Hold on. All right, so I'm going to uh, show you some of the things I picked up. And then at the end, I will uh, give you the, the, um, the price that she charged me for the lot. Uh, one of the things I picked up was this, um, this American Independence Day hat. Uh, it serves no function. I guess it's just, um, it's not a bank, it's not a birdhouse, it's just a ceramic hat. And I guess people would use it in a display or um, they would put it in the middle of like a um, picnic table or I don't know what exactly. Um, she had like one dollar on it, uh, which I thought because she's in Canada, probably not a lot of interest in the American stuff. Uh, so she uh, was probably trying to unload it. There were a few other things that had an Independence Day theme to it. Um, nothing Canada Day themed. I don't know that Ray Dunn has gotten around to doing anything Canada Day. But I could be wrong. I'm not a huge uh, collector, so I don't know. Anyways, I picked that up because it was cheap. And I thought, uh, eh, could probably could probably sell that. Uh, then I got this uh, Beauty Queen um, birdhouse. I guess you can hang it up with its hook at the top, but uh, I thought it was cool. It was like a crown. There's no images on it. It's just a birdhouse. Um, they also have um, a moisture uh, trap so that it doesn't get all moist inside, I guess. Uh, anyways, I just thought that was pretty cool. Another uh, $1 item, I think. <clears throat> and then in the birdhouse theme, I also saw this uh, apple, and it says poison on it. Now, this one she had $5 on. Um, so I thought, yeah, it's worth it. It's uh, unique. It's interesting. And uh, an apple can be Halloween. It can be fall. It can be summer. It can be all kinds of things. So I uh, thought that would have some appeal as well to a reselling market or a collector. Uh, get to that one later. So this, uh, I thought, I saw this initially, this mug, and I thought, oh, I really like the teal color, but I wasn't too crazy with the uh, island sunset uh, lid that it had um, but she had a two dollar price on it and I thought yeah for that even if I you know didn't keep the top with it and I used it myself definitely worth it for that I mean if you go to Marshall's or uh, Winners or any of those stores here these cost up to seven bucks eight bucks so I did pick that up 
one of the birdhouse um, items that I missed was uh, they had an ice cream cone there and I had it in my hand and for some reason I put it down and uh, just forgot to grab it and put it in with the other stuff so I, uh, I uh, missed out on that one and I didn't want to go back there was a lot of stuff there and a lot of people would have been interested so I didn't want to uh, you know be greedy I got this sandcastle birdhouse I thought that was quite a cool item and again she had five dollars on that and these sell um, at a discount at those um, Marshalls and Winners and JC Penny type stores um, they usually sell or TJ Maxx type stores they usually sell for about twenty dollars or in Canada twenty five uh, so I thought that was an interesting one to uh, to grab a hold of as well got this Easter piece uh, it says jelly beans on it there's no color on the basket itself but inside there are some um, some eggs and they all have her usual sayings like peace love hope uh, joy um, in different colors faith Ooh. faith they're they're cute so what I probably would do is put some of that um, that um, fake straw in there and then put those on top so that they pop a little more you can't quite see them oh there we go um so i thought that will be good for like an easter an easter sale i'll put it out sooner but if um if someone wants it at easter i'm sure it would sell faster then and let me just grab the other easter item another birdhouse this one I don't think she had a very high price on it, which is why I grabbed it. Um, there were different colors, but I, I really liked the light blue. I thought that was a very Easter color. And uh, again, it's, it's cool. Cool item. Alright, and another non-Halloween thing, because Halloween really was my main focus, being that it's that season. So I'll do those last. Um, sorry about the noise. This one I thought was cute. Had a little chicky eggs hanging out from the top. Uh, Tweet heart, which, you know, I mean, it's it's Ray Dunn, so what are you going to do? Clever. Clever and cute. I don't know why they come with lids. I can see the teapots having them, but I don't know why the cups do. But I guess they're popular. They make them a little more interesting on the shelf, and people will grab them for that reason. And I think I have one more here. Uh, this one was a dollar as well. It says woof for any dog lovers or bear lovers, I guess. Depends uh, who you are and what your interests are. Uh, so that will definitely sell. It's a popular theme. Um, these are um, stir sticks. I have a collection of stir, stir sticks. I picked some up at, at a different yard sale that same day, and I'll go through some of those items a little later, but this is going to be a Ray Dunn video, uh, just to focus on that, because there's there's a lot of it, so just wanted to keep it kind of focused. All right, Halloween. So, got these stackables. I know they make these every year. Uh, probably says the year on the bottom. Can't see it, maybe on the tag. Nope, no year. Anyways, I thought these were cute. They have the traditional Ray Dunn lettering font on the back. I like all of these colors. These are all my uh, Halloween colors that I enjoy displaying. So I did display it last year here in my own personal collection, but I will sell this one for Halloween from my booth. And we'll talk about um, selling modern items in an antique mall uh, in a bit, but I just wanted to get through this stuff first. Oh, and then there is another birdhouse, and it's the same mold as the beach house, but this is a Dracula castle, uh, which I thought was very cool. It had the, the cool orange ribbon on the top, and uh, yeah, that that's pretty cool, and it was, I think, $5 as well. Uh, and again, she, uh, she kind of gave me a lot price, so I'll tell you that in a it. Uh, I got this pumpkin. It says haunted. It's got kind of almost like a hematite look to it and I know that they've been using those hematite and shiny um, 
um, paints lately or finishes on their stuff. Um, it's not my favorite, but I, I do like Hematite itself, so I thought this one was pretty cool. But again, it's not one I'm going to keep. It is one I'm going to sell. And I won't sell these for a huge amount because um, I just I just find they're mass produced and they're not that hard to get. So I, uh, I will put a decent price on them. That will help me pay for my um, costs of hunting for them as well as my booth costs as well. Anyway, thought that was cute. And a candle. I'm not a big candle guy. I don't like lighting fires uh, in my uh, in my place. Um, it's a it's an apartment style place, so I I do have uh, reservations about lighting any type of um, uh, flame or fire in a place where you know there's just there's just risky. I mean, I, I fall asleep sometimes and I don't think about a candle, so uh, I use lights mostly that look like candles. Um, but this one was cute. It has a bit of a, a smell, uh, smoked birch wood. So, yeah, it's not the worst. I don't like those really sweet candles, so that one's not too bad. It's got a little bit of a chipping on it, but uh, or it's more like paint scraping, uh, probably from things bumping. But uh, I thought it was cute. It's a gnome. Gnomes are very popular these days. And, uh, of course, uh, Ray Dunn on the cutting edge of what's popular. <clears throat> I got one of these canisters. I uh, just love the little pumpkin. Anything with a pumpkin, uh, I'm there for it. And uh, this color is just really striking. Uh, the colors she uses, I think, are quite striking. Uh, very on point, very um, up to date. And uh, especially with Halloween, there are various oranges that you can get um, based on the uh, medium, whether it's plastic or ceramic or a uh, candle or whatever. But uh, if you don't get the colors right, it doesn't feel like the holiday. Now this lid does not belong to this canister, um, but I'm just going to show you the versatility of these items. Let me grab this. So I also got this trick-or-treat mug, and you can put the canister lid on the mugs, or you can put the uh, mug lid on the canister, uh, so that gives them some versatility. Really like, really like this one as well. Um, the canister lid gives it a different look and feel, and also um, fits better. It has that rubber um, thing that helps to keep it in place, which I'd wish I'd put it on when I uh, uh, took them home because they were rattling and it wasn't driving me nuts. <laughs> And I've got two more. I've got another trick or treat. And this one has the orange inside and the white on the outside. And I got a magic one. I believe this was last year or the year before as well. Um, this green I really like. Uh, it's the lime muted green rather than the, uh, the glossy greens that they've been doing lately. Uh, which almost gives it like an oily, like if you see uh, an oil sheen on water, that uh, kind of is the look that they go with. So, yeah, and then of course, versatility-wise, you can rearrange things to kind of make it look more fun. Um, I should show you one thing as well uh, to compare last year with uh, what they're doing this year. Hold on. All right, so this is one that I bought uh, this year for this season. And you can see it's got a canister. The canister's a little bit shorter. I think they had taller canisters, but I kind of like the shorter one. And the pumpkin, you can see, is um, taller. So here is last season's, and this is this season's. You can see quite different. And again, this orange to me is more Halloween. This orange here is more muted. Um, so, eh, <coughs> excuse me. It looks good against the black, but um, against other oranges, eh, not so much. Let me just show you. See, gives it a two-tone orange look, so eh, not my favorite, but uh, it looks okay with the black. So uh, what I do with these these newer styles is I usually store them, um, or I'll display them for the season and then store them. And then after a couple of years when they're no longer available, then I may put them out in my booth for uh, collectors, because my theme at my booth is... Um, 
uh, collectibles uh, and retro. So anything like this to me is very retro. This is a Halloween thing. A uh, Halloween look is very retro. So um, that is uh, to me acceptable in a booth. So let's talk about that for a minute. Now I've, I've seen other uh, YouTubers and even heard people when I'm at the booth talk about uh, how that stuff's not antique or that stuff's not even vintage. Well, there's a couple of things. If you have your own shop, you can do whatever you need to in your shop and you have more opportunity to set up like antiques and vintage and layer it in whatever way and stage it in whatever way you like. Um, but if you have a booth in a mall, you want to make your rent and you want to do better than your rent every month. Otherwise, it's just not worth it. Now, for me, I do, of course, I want to make the money back that I that I pay into it. Um, and profit is great. I'm not going to um, deny anyone, you know, their right to make a profit. But um, I do have a collectible theme and a retro theme. Uh, my booth is Retro Rescued, just like my YouTube channel. Um, so I do like anything that gives me that retro vibe and anything that gives me that collector vibe as well. Because collectors, um, this item here, it's not vintage. It's brand new. But 20 years from now, it will be vintage. And collectors will be looking for this. There may be a phase when it goes out of fashion and people are like, oh, not more Ray Dunn. When is she going to stop? Um, but eventually that comes around again and people who collected this or grew up with this uh, they will be looking for those things too so i do not begrudge collectors coming into my booth and wanting the things that um, they are collecting i uh, will talk to people when they're in my booth when i'm refreshing and uh, they will tell me oh do you have any more of this or do you have any more of that i look for this and I uh, try to accommodate because those are sometimes my regulars who come in and they keep me going. They keep my habit, my my hobby going for me. I can still go out there and hunt for the things I love and in the meanwhile keep my eye open for the things they may love. So that's uh, that's that's the justification for me. I need to make my rent every month and if I just had antiques in there I wouldn't do it. It wouldn't it wouldn't work because people will go in and they will look at antiques out of curiosity or out of nostalgia, but they tend to not buy antique because uh, styles change so much. So you may have like one item here or there in your home uh, that's antique, but overall you will want something to kind of match the aesthetic that you're going for. So um, they will go more for what's popular right now, which is vintage and uh, mid-century, um, 70s, uh, bohemian, um, anything like that, even 80s, the 80s, uh, 80s exploded with color and um, it started off with a Miami Vice kind of influence where there were muted colors, the Easter colors I call them, but then it kind of exploded into really interesting confetti and uh, leopard print and very shocking colors like lime and uh, greens uh, and oranges and, and pinks, very uh, almost Barbie-esque I guess. So that's becoming more and more popular and I am keeping my eyes open for more 80s stuff, but for me, I, I know more a lot, a lot more about the 70s and the 60s than I do about the 80s. So it's a learning process, and I enjoy that. But I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to stay uh, relevant in my booth and on my online store for things that people are actually going to buy, not just things that um, represent something for some integrity. You know, I must stay antique at my booth it's just not realistic it's a, not a realistic place to be especially in a community like i'm in is not a huge metropolis um, where you would get all types of people coming in and you would be turning over everything but here people are looking for specific things and i have to be very attuned to what they're looking for so that's um that's my story i'm sticking to it just want to show you one more thing that i got at this uh at this ray dunn um yard sale i forgot to tell you too that she she told me that she had two stores and she was i think downsizing to one store which is why she was unloading a lot of this um 
this inventory at very reasonable rates. Uh, the rates that she gave me was $40 for everything. And I also have a Ray Dunn um, mat that I put outside my door. Uh, they have uh, doormats now as well. So I put one for Halloween outside my door. Um, I'm not going to get it. It's, you can look them up. They're, they're pretty recent. They're not, a, not an older item. Um, but this, this here is a Mr. Christmas item, which I just couldn't leave. It is one of those Mr. Christmas ceramic trees. Um, here in Canada, I don't think we got this one because I think this is a very uh, patriotic, there it is, patriotic, patriotic tree. And if it was Canadian patriotic, it would be red and white. Um, so this is an American one. Um, and I love it. It's such a cool, it's such a cool looking tree. I think, I think that the lights are removable on these, so I could change it up to uh, look more Christmassy. And uh, again, it'll go in my booth. She was asking $10, but again, for $40 for all of this stuff, uh, that's pretty reasonable, I think. And um, even this alone, I could sell this tree for $40 and make back what I uh, put into this trip. So it was worth it. And then, of course, um, I did more yard sailing as well that day and had some really good luck. Um, I sometimes don't have a lot of good luck, but um, the small towns, it's easier to do a town-wide yard sale. Uh, for justifying it because in a city like London, which is like half a million people, you're driving around most of the time looking for neighborhoods that have more than one yard sale because you can just get stuck going from yard sale to yard sale and the time in between, all the good stuff's gone by about 9 or 10 o'clock. So uh, I prefer the small town-wide ones because neighbors talk to each other and they organize a neighborhood yard sale. Um, they will have them at churches, they will have uh, rummage sales. Uh, all at the same time and then even the thrift stores in small towns will get involved and throw some stuff out on the street with prices that are reasonable and uh, it's a lot of fun so I'll show you some of that in my next video I uh, hope you enjoyed that I do have other videos coming just had some personal stuff going on in uh, life so I wasn't able to do videos for a while but um, I'll try to be more consistent I'm aiming for one a month one video a month uh, and as things kind of ease up, then hopefully I can do more. But uh, for now, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And uh, we will talk again. Enjoy your summer. Stay safe and uh, have a good one. Bye.